G'day, g'day, and welcome to Tartarian Truthers with your host Jojo. And after an excursion to a Rookwood Cemetery last week with my new Tartarian friend Emma, it was very clear that much of it is made up of graves and structures from a far distant past. After doing a little bit of digging, we found some interesting anomalies. You might remember from our sneak peek, we learned that with the closure of Town Hall and Davenshire cemeteries by the mid-19th centuries in the city, and an ever-increasing population, a decision was made to purchase a huge area of land to establish a new necropolis. Haslam's Creek was selected because of its remote and sparsely populated site. In 1862, the government purchased 80 acres of land at Haslam's Creek from the Edward Cohen estate and later purchased the remaining 200 acres in its surrounding areas in 1879, which already was home to several buildings including St. Michael's Chapel and various cottages for section managers and sextons. So many of these structures were already there when they acquired the land. Interesting, huh? After the realisation that much of the infrastructure already existed in 1862, I wanted to learn more about the landowner. Who is Edward Cohen? Cohen was born in London in 1822 and migrated to New South Wales in 1833 at 11 years old. By 1842, he was employed by his father and at some point Cohen relocated to Melbourne and joined an auctioneering enterprise until 1853. But in 1847, at 25 years of age, he was married and had five sons and three daughters. He was a tea importer and a merchant and also a director of many companies. What a busy man. But no mention of land ownership on Wikipedia here. We mustn't forget to mention his political career, where he was elected to the Legislative Assembly for the seat of East Melbourne and was Mayor of Melbourne from 1862 to 1863. Whew, I'm exhausted. I then decided to look Cohen up on the Dictionary of Sydney.org website and here we learned a little bit more about him. Edward Aaron Cohen was a merchant, a parliamentarian and a Jewish community leader who managed his father's wholesale grocery firm in George Street. He then moved to Melbourne in 1842 where he became an auctioneer, then moved to Sydney before moving back to Melbourne. We can't even get to Melbourne by car in 12 hours, like how is he getting around? I digress. Then. In the late 1840s, he acquired land at Haslam's Creek. In 1862, the government purchased 200 acres of Cohen's land for £2,000 to turn it into Brookwood Cemetery. Rookwood Necropolis today is at an impressive 286 acres compared to the old Davenshire Street Cemetery at 4.5 acres. I find it interesting they selected such a huge site considering our small population back then. Rookwood Cemetery is pretty big. It even has its own postcode. Now when we look closely here on Google Maps, you'll find some interesting anomalies and also some occult symbolism from above. For example, you'll find this checkered layout up here, um, circles with crosses and so many circles um, throughout this entire site. Um, and when you, oh, and then you have this serpentine canal system that travels all over the grounds also 
it is quite fascinating when you do walk the site in person and we walked quite a lot of it. And some of the main features which we visited are over here we have the red bricks from the Serpentine Canals. Um, these ones seem to be in disrepair. So many all over, mostly in disrepair. We found so many red bricks and this is part of the Serpentine Canal. But we did take some pictures of the red bricks and they were stamped and we'd love to get some um, more information on these bricks actually to see where they were actually manufactured. Then we drove over to the main circle and what intrigued us the most at this site was where the original mortuary receiving station once stood and was relocated to Canberra. Mortuary station fell into a state of disrepair between 1952 and 57 when the timber roof was destroyed by fire. Now check out this article I found on ABC News website from 2016. From Sydney Mortuary Station to Canberra Anglican Church. Now I am not going to read the entire article, but basically we learn that when the station had fallen into disrepair, there were plans to demolish the building and um, come to find out they really did want to try and save this this structure and the ladies tea club saved the stonework and here you can see a pretty good image of what um, the necropolis looked like in 1874 very well established as you can see and then they they actually move it they relocate it from Rookwood to Canberra and the structure was then painstakingly demolished stone by stone in May of 1958 and 720 tonnes was hauled to Canberra in 83 semi-trailer loads. That's absurd, but they did move it and this was the blessing, I believe, in 18, uh, sorry, 1958. And um, as you can see here, it is complete looking beautiful the interior and they also rescued the stained glass window from England um, so the railway bell becomes a church bell and here it is today in all its glory another very interesting anomaly is the serpentine drainage canal like I mentioned earlier I mean this thing goes on for ages and we walked quite a bit of it um, and it gets really really deep in some areas and you really start to wonder what the purpose was for this and did it actually exist prior to selecting Rookwood as the new cemetery Let's take a look at it. It is an open brick lined drain which like a snake weaves its way across the centre of Rookwood and is crossed at regular intervals by cast iron and wrought iron bridges. The Serpentine Canal is an engineering feat. The drains are made of sandstone bricks and handmade to the English specifications indicating that the construction of the serpentine drain predates 1890. The drains are 900 millimeters by 1.7 meters deep.
the Flemish bonding pattern forms a series of decorative crosses in the wall and is suitable for the construction on the curved walls. Who built this amazing canal? And where were the bricks made? And then lastly, what I thought we should take a quick look at is this one over here. This is called the Crown of Thorns. And it is quite a remarkable sight. Let's take a look. So now we're going to look at the relocation of the Devonshire Street Gate. Apparently, once they closed the cemetery, they thought it was important to move the gates to the new, new Rookwood Cemetery. And when we took a look at it, which is the photo we took here on the right, it doesn't seem to be well kept or, um, you know, even if it is on the heritage list, it seems to be quite run down. Now the original Devonshire gates lead to the old elephant house which today is completely abandoned. Take a look at this. So remember I mentioned that it resembled Dutch style construction? Turns out it's not. And today looking very sad. Originally known as the Red Rest House or the Ornamental House, the building is most commonly referred to as the Elephant House due to its resemblance to the original elephant enclosure at Truong Zoo, which I could not find any old images to confirm this, so if anybody does have images of the old Elephant House enclosure at Truong Zoo, please let us know. So most of these structures that were existing were redesignated to be used as administrative offices and later abandoned, as you can see here. A big thank you to our new Tartarian truther, Emma, for taking me on an amazing tour of Rookwood Cemetery, walking three hours one day in the heat and then returning the next morning to measure bricks in the rain. You are a true legend. Thank you so much and we will definitely have more to come. Cheers. Ooh.